All right, now we're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. Let me make sure we, we're popping in live here. It's about to stream. Hold on one second, guys. Let me oh. see if it's going to pop up. Let me see if it's going to pop up. Let me see if it's going to pop up. Um, where we at? One second, guys. Okay, hit me. There we go. We're here. Up. We're here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so what's up, guys? We're here, man. Um, uh, welcome to today's broadcast, man. Second, guys. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got the echo too. Hold on, let me turn this down. Welcome to today's broadcast. Let me turn this. Oh shit, how am I going to fix this? Hold on. Headphones. Headphones, yes, yes, yes. Let me do that. How am I going to fix this? Hold on. Let me get these headphones popping. Hold on, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all bear with me, guys. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Hold on. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's get it going. All right. There we go. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Yes. I'm still here. Okay. Let me see if I can log into you. What is that? The last thing I got I just want to know it so I can see folks' comments and include them in the conversation. <laughs> cool. Okay, I can't even see it. This is. Hey, you know. Hold on. Yeah, because it's not even saying you live, actually. Okay, Let me see. Are you, are you on. Um, hold on. Hold on one second. Yeah, because it's not even saying you live, actually. Let me see. Are you on. Um, oh, right, there we go. I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Cool. So, cool. God damn, well, this shit is. This is my first time doing yeah. Zoom. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got so. It. Okay, I'm trying to get this shit together here. I'm trying to, my headphones <laughs> wasn't working. Ah, how can I do this? How can I do this? How can I do this? Oh, you know what I think you might be able to do? Yeah. You're hearing me through Zoom, right? I think so. YouTube. Can you mute YouTube? Yeah, I muted YouTube. I muted okay. that. All right. Um, okay. That seemed to fix it, no? Yeah, yeah. Let me do this. YouTube. Oh, look, look at it. Man, I, dude, look, I got you right here, fam. Look at it. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. it looks good, but we just got to get this audio cracking. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Man, I got you right here, fam. Look at it. Yeah, yeah. It looks good, but we just got to get this audio yeah, cracking. We got any nigger nerds out here in the, in the YouTube chat room to help out? <laughs> Yeah, how do we get this audio? <laughs> Boy, this echo is a beast. God damn it, how do we do this? How do we do this? Yeah, how do we get this audio? Let me see, let me see. Uh, speaker. Yeah, there's no speaker on in your, in your office other than your computer speaker. It's my computer speaker. That's the thing that's on right now. What if you mute it? I'm just curious. Let me see. Uh, let me mute. Let me try to mute. It's my computer. How about? So, now, can you? I don't hear. When you speak. Okay. Can you hear me and um? Mute now I can't hear you at all. Oh wow. Okay. 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 I don't hear. Audio signal. That's us. Okay. Let me. Shit. Let's speak it. Damn it. Okay. Ah, damn it, man. Turn the speakers. Any speakers use headphones. Okay, this these janky goddamn headphones ain't working. <laughs> I'm trying to use headphones. Let me try my headphones again. Oh, was it working? Yeah, the headphones wasn't working because I'm still hearing audio. Let me try my headphones again. Let me try this one more time. I got this new computer. Damn. Audio. Okay. Okay. All right. Say something, Ron. Yeah. I mean, that cleaned it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For some, I can't hear myself. It's real weird. I can hear myself, but I can hear you. Okay. But this. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We. We. We there. We there. We. 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 We live. Okay. Cool. Let me. Let me test something. You're testing one, two, three. Test one, three. 
Okay. Okay. There's, somebody said there's a little echo there, but let's see. Okay. Let me yeah, let me yeah. ask people. Okay. Like okay. This might work. This might work. Um, everybody on YouTube, can you hear me and can you hear Rami? We good. We good. We good. Everybody say it's perfect. Are we good. We good. No echoes. Everything is good. Yo, I'm trying to see the comments too, man. Yeah, Hold yeah. On. Go to um Tariq Radio. Tariq Radio on YouTube. I'm there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this. I just don't see the comments, but let me see. I see you got 22 likes already. Oh, damn comments. It's oh, more than comments. that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, I think I get it. I got it. You know Re what? Refresh Hell, your page. Go. Yeah, refresh your page because, yeah, we got like um, 70, 80, what, 80 something likes right now. It's 300 oh, people watching. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trapped. I'm trapped in the past. Okay, I get it. I get it. All right. Did you re um you refresh? I'm about to, and I did. Cool, 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 cool. And yes, that does change the game. But hold up, I'm I, 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 I'm gonna just you know what I'm I, the reason I want to keep this. I want to see you. Um, I'm gonna do it on my computer. This way, I can read it easier anyway. Okay. YouTube. Cool. YouTube. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, man. All right. So I'm ready when you are. All right? We're here. We're here. So you got it. Okay. So look, man. We're here, guys. We're here. I got my dude Romney here. Romney Malco. We're here chopping it up, man. We had to, you know, forget all about the janky shit. This is my first time really <laughs> using Zoom for this, but we're here. Other than that, man. So how you been, brother? Man, I'm in gonna lie. I, I, you might not be. You might. You may or may not be able to tell, but I'm exhausted. I've been great, uh, but I've been. It's been nerve wracking, you know, because. You know, I put out my own movie and decided that I wanted to own the movie as well. Yeah. After I made the movie, some really impressive people that I work with decided that they wanted to be involved with the movie and help me sell it. And it just added another layer of pressure because I didn't want to let them down, you know? Man, but, um, the movie, the trailer looks hella good, man. The trailer looks very, very good. Man, how did you get the funding for the... Now, by the way, what's the name of the new movie? What's the name of the new movie? Let people know what the name of the new movie is. That's a good call. The name of the movie is Tijuana Jackson, Purpose Over Prison. Yes. And, and, and Tijuana about, Jackson is based on a character that you would do online. Very funny character. Mm -hmm. The character yep. is a former prisoner turned motivational speaker. Is that correct? That's 100% money right there. Yes, so yes, yes. I basically started this character uh, 19, 20 years ago. And the reason I started the character was because, uh, you know, I, I, I really saw it as an opportunity to educate people um, that wouldn't listen to a corny brother like me right out the gate. And, man, I started doing that character, and it caught on like hot cake, yeah. like hot cake. And I've pretty much been doing it ever since. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Now, what made you want to write, uh, do a whole movie? Because it's you, you were doing it as little skits, but now it's yes. a whole movie. How did you get it out to a whole movie? What's the theme of the movie? The theme of the movie is basically, you know, man, God, there's so much to say about this that I don't really even know where to begin. But ultimately, the theme of the movie is it's, it's, it's giving you a real-life breakdown of what it is to be disenfranchised by the community. Yeah. I mean, you know, but by the judicial system within a community, right? Yeah. And come out of there and try to do better for yourself than than the system uh, is willing to allow you. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. Usually, you over police a disenfranchised community. You then put people in jail, and then once they come out as felons, they're disenfranchised even more. Then you know, to the point of not even be able being able to support their families. And I wanted to show how the, all of this affects the community, but I also wanted to show, you know, how, how determined this dude was to overcome that, uh, that caste bias of our judicial system. Yeah. Now, who directed the movie? I directed the movie. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did y'all film it out here in L.A. or where'd y'all film it? Now, man, I filmed this movie. Some of it I filmed in L.A., um, like out in the Redondo Beach, Torrance area. Yeah. Um, cause, um. You know, I, 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 I have a property out there and I had become really familiar with that area and I saw how I could use some of that beach town feel yeah. to match Florida. So I shot some in Redondo Beach uh, uh, and, and, and Torrance, Lawndale area. Um, and then I shot some in Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Florida and Orlando, Florida. Yeah. So the movie that you're most known for, most people know you from what, 40 year old version, right? 
it, it's a toss up between Forty Year Old Virgin and Think Like a Man because Think Like a Man became a huge crossover hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you, you, you're talking about Forty Year Old Virgin no, and yeah. Yeah. No, just what I well, here's what I've noticed is that yeah, you know what? Real, real talk. I feel like a lot of people go, Yo, man, that's that dude from Forty Year Old Virgin. But whenever I'm involved in a, in, in a black film that becomes um, a mainstream film, yeah. I feel like way a way more diverse audience sees it. Yeah. So, you know, where I might get a lot more, you know, young white college kids coming up to me for 40 year old version, I get soccer moms, college kids, you know, of all races coming up to me. Should I even get Karen's coming up to me? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so so it's hard to say which one's more popular, honestly, of what I'm most known for. Was your first movie or main role, the Hammer, MC Hammer role? You know, honestly, I think that my first movie main role might have been, I think it might have actually been a small movie that I did with, uh, damn, that's a good question. I think it might have been a small movie that I did with Paul Rudd. What movie was that? It was called The Chateau. Okay. Uh, we went to we went to Paris and shot a film in 13 days. Oh, wow! And it was very much an improv film, and it was like a, you know, it was like a, IFC darling, like you know, independent, um, uh, independent film, of course. But it was like a little darling of the of, of the, uh, of of the um, festivals, and um, in fact, that's the movie that got me the job on 40 Old Virgin. What year did y'all do that movie? Uh, uh, we did that probably in 2001. When did you do the Hammer? VH1 movie. That's a good question. I feel like I did that hammer thing in 2003. Okay. Y'all need to go see if y'all y'all got his that's that was a very good damn movie, man. That was a Thank very you. good movie. Brother, I did Have you always been a, a dancer? You were dancing your ass off in that movie, man. Have you always been a dancer? No, but I've always been in the hip hop. So okay. I heard I first heard hip hop when I was like 7 years old with dude in my in my, in my neighborhood got shot. Yeah. His name was Timmy and this dude named Mark that I knew started doing his beat with his hands. One day he was like, I heard shot. I heard a cry. I heard, I, he said, I heard a shot. I heard a cry. I said, Timmy, 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 did you have to die? I was like, what was that? Mm -hmm. And from that point forward, I was into hip hop. And so I come from an era of hip hop where we danced, where brothers shook their asses. And <laughs> you gotta understand, you gotta understand, I grew up the Soul Train too, right? Yeah. So dancing, you know, you know, dancing wasn't, and looking goofy wasn't nothing but a thing for me. Yeah, so, now where'd you grow up, Rami? I was born in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I lived in Brooklyn, Queens, Trinidad and Tobago, and Texas. Okay. I lived I, I lived and went to school in those four places. Now, what made y'all go to Trinidad? Was your family in the military or something, or what? No, my family's Trinidadian. Oh, I didn't so, know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah, so so my family, you know, it's funny, man. Being Trinidadian is one of the reasons that I'm, I, I, you see, I'm very careful when commenting on, like, issues in black America right. because I, I do understand that having that Caribbean heritage and, 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 and being able to uh, 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 experience life in other countries where love and appreciation for my skin tone was was second nature, right. it gives me a different perspective. I kind of look at America from the outside in rather than from the inside out. Right. So in some ways I often don't feel less qualified, you know what I mean? Of course. But that upbringing uh was very influential i lived in and we went there because my parents were young so a lot of times i get dropped off there and i'd go to school there for a while mm. and then once my parents once they really got their shit together and finally split up yeah no, um, yeah I, we then moved to texas for kind of like a fresh start because yeah. my dad was in um my dad was in construction and there was a big oil industry in texas okay so i know you were living in puerto rico for a while are you still living going back and forth in puerto rico yeah, man. You know, um, I, I got with a Puerto Rican lady who had two babies, and once that hurricane came through and kind of like wiped out a lot of the resources, that just, that just, we had no choice but to move. And so I actually, during that hurricane, right after that hurricane, we all basically went to Atlanta so I could film night school yeah. and so that we could figure out where we were going to live next. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Um, the, you did the night school movie. That was that was the one with um, Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish, right? That's how, correct. How, and I know you and Kevin Hart got a lot of good chemistry. How was it working with Tiffany? 
Oh, it was beautiful, man. And you know, man, me and Tiffany were just doing a live the other night that must have lasted an hour and a half. Because I really, like, I adore Tiffany. Me and my lady, like, really adore Tiffany. She, you yeah. know, she got a good heart, man, and she's funny, and she's still very collaborative. And yeah. so, you know, without sounding too cheesy, man, Tiffany's real folks. And like, yeah. in ownership of it, where a lot of us are trying our best to like, cover up and appear to be much more together than we are. Tiffany don't face nothing. And I, I and, and and I don't know, man. I just feel comfortable in the company of people like that. Was there ever was there a role that you almost had, but that somebody else got that you were real this close to getting, but somebody else got the role and the role blew up? Um, I would say Black Panther, but that's a lot. That's a lot. They didn't call me for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, damn. Honestly, I don't have one. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really selective about my gigs, man. I, I, I figured out two things. I, I figured out two things in life. I yeah. figured out that um, I figured out that one, I could I could achieve things in this business, or I could achieve fulfillment in this business, and I chose fulfillment. And yeah. I also figured out that, um, like, once I once I figured out what peace of mind was, I kind of let that govern all the decisions I made in regards to employment. Yeah. So I, so even when I there's a job that I'm thinking about accepting, we do research, background research on all the people involved. And straight up, if there's just some, um, some, some not so good people involved in that project, that job is dead to me. I don't even see it, it disappears. It's not even, it's not even something that I, I learned of. I completely forget it. It's not, None, none of this is worth my peace of mind. Have so you, I don't, really, I don't really have a job. I don't really have jobs that I look back on. Honest to God. Have you um, been offered a role that you were like, uh, I'm about to skip on this? You know, just something that was kind of funny style that you were like, ah. Uh. Um, no, no, um, no, no. Yes, like you mean people come to me and then I say I don't want to do it. Right. Yes, yeah. I've had, somebody's yeah, giving yeah, you a yeah. role, a serious role, and you looked at it like, oh, oh no, this is something I can't really. This. That, that's a, that's about seventy percent of the time. Oh, wow. About seventy percent. Oh, you know what? I got two jobs right now that completely contradict what I just said because I just thought about this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was being considered uh, for um, the James Brown movie. Oh, well, they're doing another right? one. He kept calling me in for the James Brown movie. Oh. Brian Grazer kept calling me in for the for the uh, for the. Uh, for that movie, yeah. that's one movie right there where, um, no, the, the original James, I mean, the one, the one that the dude from Black Panther did. Okay, yeah, 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 I, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, and so he did, he had, he kept interviewing me for years before the fact. So I thought the job went away, and then years later, I realized that it was being made with a different actor, which I wasn't surprised, because that's, that's traditional Hollywood. Yeah. But then I have another role, I did a movie with Morgan Freeman, Michael Douglas, Kevin Klein, and Robert De Niro. Yeah. Called, and this movie was called um, Las Vegas. Pretty good movie. Okay. And so the director called me in. They, uh, the producers and everything, they, they said, listen, we got this role. We ain't really, we haven't developed this role. No one can really crack the code on this. Can you give us your perspective? I read the role and I was like, oh, this is easy. Let me explain what I see here. This is the dude who works for one of the biggest hotel franchises in the world. This guy's mentor is the owner of this franchise. Mm -hmm. And so what he, this guy decides and how this guy behaves is heavily influenced by the owners. Yeah. And so that would be the way he'd make every decision throughout this movie. It was like, dude, thank you, thank you, thank you. Shook my hand. They was like asking me my availability. All of this sent me home, bro, and called T.I. <laughs> what movie was that? <laughs> Las Vegas. Wow. Wow. Facts. Wow. And, wow. And then uh for whatever reason, T I tells the story way better than me, so I ain't even gonna tell it. Yeah. T I tells it way better than me, but for whatever reason it didn't work out. And so they ended up uh having to call me back, you know, and uh eke up some more paper. Yes, you know, fly yeah, back to the West Coast. Yeah, and I did. <laughs> and I and I ended up getting to do it. So to answer your earlier question, two movies. Yes, good, good. Now when it now I remember you first from the College Boys. Y'all had a hey, yes, y'all don't know for yes. uh, my lyric. Yes, the College Boys. For some reason, man, I, I thought y'all were from the Bay Area somewhere. 
Um, how did you, yeah, did, uh, did a lot of people think that at the time? Yeah, and I know exactly why, too. Why is that? Because there was a dude named Sway who was the aficionado. He was the authority of hip-hop back in the day. Yes, indeed. Sway. How, Sway? That's how. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sway would give us so much love in that area. Mm. He was the first person to put us on. He was the first person to, to break down the album and, and give us all these kudos for originality and tell her how much the, the, the songs meant and, and what the songs meant. And at the same time, the crew was from Baytown, Texas. So me and my dudes was coming out of Baytown, Texas. Yeah. So that combined with all the love we were getting out of the Bay, we ended up moving. When we first released, we ended up getting four times more orders for our music in the Bay than anywhere else in the United States of America. That's how that happened. How many albums did y'all do? We ended up doing two albums. And just to be clear, um, you know, let's say that maybe Jay-Z's got like what? How many hits you think Jay-Z got? Oh, shit. Oh, man, Jay-Z probably got like 30, 40 hits. Right, right. Yeah. We got one. Yeah. We got one. Just one. Mm -hmm. No more than that. Mm -hmm. I'm a one-hit wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be real honest, I was only a one-hit wonder for like a week or two because the rest of the development knocked me out the top spot. So, oh, damn. Yeah. Man. Yeah, at that time, yeah. it was... At that time, it was a lot of hippie-style, PM Dawn-style thing. That was the wave at the time. Yeah. It really was. It really was. And the rest of the development was dope. Yeah, they you know were. What I'm it was dope. Yes, Dude, they had that, you know, they had that pro-black, but kind of like universal sound. And, you know, they mixed it up and gave a good show. Now, where did you go to acting school? Did you go to acting school in New York? Um, No, I, I, didn't, I didn't start going to acting school until I was like 30 years old. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't really, because after music, I kind of, started an internet business and just kind of stayed there. I was like, oh, wow, that paid me more. This, this internet business paid me more than entertainment ever did. Yeah. I never thought I'd do it. So when I did get pulled back in that um, entertainment, um, what I did was, uh, when I did get the pull back in entertainment, what I did was uh, I signed up with an agent, started booking gigs, and then I um, started taking acting class at that point. Yeah. And yeah. because what I would do is I'd go in and I'd charm the room but I didn't have the technique to close the deal. Yeah. So an acting coach said to me, listen, man, uh, I'm going to give you free classes because I know you're going to book. You just, and I don't think that it, people give you things easily. So I want to, I want to help you in that regard. Her name's, her name, if you're in LA, her name is Sandy Marshall. Mm -hmm. uh, out, she's out in Sherman Oaks, Sandy Marshall. She's like, so she started giving me free classes, yo. And real talk, Here's what's crazy. I didn't want to tell her that I would happily pay mm. because um, I didn't want her to feel like I didn't appreciate and understand the meaning of what she had offered. Yeah. But I was paying for one class a week, and she now insisted that I took two classes a week. She really believed in me, fam. Mm. And, um, and uh, that was really how I got my start. What, why do you think a lot of um, up-and-coming black actors don't really get in get in the game like they should. I know the industry, you know, they have limited opportunities, but do you think that more of the up-and-coming black actors could, could be more thorough with their training? Because I've, I've cast movies before, and I, it's, I've seen cats in here that I'm trying to give a shot to, but they're, they're not really learning the craft. You, you know what I'm saying? So do you think that's an issue of us... Going in, we got to be over prepared to a certain degree. I'm, 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 I'm gonna just pause it so I can acknowledge S. Rep saying that College Boys Radio Fusion Radio was actually a pretty good album. I'm gonna just go ahead yeah. and give him his props, yes, because <laughs> I do agree. Yes, um, so moving forward, yeah. um, I, I think that, um, look, man, when it really boils down to what makes actors any race, creed, color, whatever, good, is their ability to actually tap into the most human aspects of themselves. Yeah. Without judgment. Mm. Without judgment. You get hired to play a pedophile, you have to play that pedophile without judgment if you choose to accept that role. Right, right. Right? Right. Now, I want you to take anyone who's had their self-esteem pummeled 
no matter which way they look, no matter what billboard, no matter what screen they look at, there's something on that, on the surface of those things to convince you that who you are is not enough. Mm -hmm. How do you now volunteer yourself to play this role that degrades you or your likeness even more in the eyes of the public? How do you do that comfortably? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And so I think that, I think that, you know, if, you know, when, when you're coming from that type of place, it's very difficult to completely commit to characters that don't show you in the best light. Mm. But I also think that we're in a culture where it's very confusing. People don't understand the length of time that it takes to succeed in this business. This be true. And so in the need to satiate their immediate to get that immediate gratification yeah they tend they, we tend to take shortcuts mm. here's the here's the craziest downside about that shortcut when you don't take acting classes and i'm not talking about any acting class you need to be taking acting classes where there are working actors and when i say working actors i'm not talking about tom cruise right right all right i'm not talking about denzel washington i'm not talking about Morgan Freeman. i'm talking about Working actors, as in they're booking commercials, mm -hmm. or they're going on auditions. They might not necessarily be booking them, but they're going on auditions. Right. They're, they're, they're going out. They're booking guest starring roles. Why do you want to be in that class? I'll tell you why. Because aside from learning your craft, which is probably paramount, mm -hmm. you are also falling into probably one of the most effective networks in the entertainment field. Mm -hmm. And it's because... If they're going on auditions, if the people in your class are going on auditions, if the people in your class are, are, are booking commercials, if they're, you know, getting little small guest roles here and there, that means they have representation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if, 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 they, if, if they see your talent and you're good, they'll be like, oh, you got to meet my agent. They ain't even got to say that. A lot of times to show young talent their support, an agent or a manager will actually come and sit in on the acting class. Mm -hmm where you have an opportunity to be discovered as well. Yeah. But people don't understand or they undermine the value. And I'll tell you right now, as far as as far as far us in the game and, and learning our craft, it's just a matter of education. Yeah. We, we, you know, listen, man, when you come from a place where you are, and this, I'm not saying this is everybody, but if you grew up like me, pop culture and mainstream media was where you got the majority of your information. Yeah, yeah. And so here I am looking at Michael Jackson trying to figure out how to make it when I was a kid. Right, right. I was looking at Prince and Michael Jackson trying to figure out how am I going to make it in music, literally. Right? But if you are willing to go beyond what mainstream media is offering you, and you are actually willing to go digging, you begin to learn, get real literature, and get, you know, allow yourself to actually uh, access people who have done it and are explaining how it's done in layman's terms, you have a hell of a, you have a better shot than the education with that than you are with the education you're getting from mainstream media. Absolutely. And that you, you know, mainstream media and, and like pop culture is just low hanging fruit, man. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of us are trying to squeeze through this bottleneck, not knowing that a lot of the people coming through those, those channels are, are the equivalent to the people that led slaves to the shore so that the Portuguese could scoop them up. Mm, mm, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't realize that. Like, you know, you, you a lot of people that we look at and idolize, they're looking out for themselves. Absolutely. 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 You know, and you you're very prolific, man. You're very prolific in the industry. Oh, thank you, man. You and, too, my brother. Yeah. And you're a, you don't get into no scandals and none of that bullshit. You're not, you know, on that, you know, popping bottles and all that goofy bullshit. It seems like people who are into the, hey, let me, you know, pop the bottles and, you know, all that old stuff, they 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 get caught up in a lot of stuff. And, you know, people like Denzel says stuff like, hey, this is a job. You know, I, I with my wife, I go to work. This is a job. I don't do the Hollywood thing. I notice mm -hmm, people yeah. with that kind of humble mentality, they have a lot of longevity in the game. What made you humble? What made you, or did you go through a stage where you said, hey, shit, I'm fucking Romney. I just played fucking Hammer. Let me go out here and get some of these breezies. Did you go you through know, a stage? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, you know, let me go out there and get some of this walk. No, I was like, really never, first of all, there's a couple of things. Remember, I didn't start acting until I was 30. Yeah, yeah. That, that in itself is a blessing. Mm -hmm. 
And so I didn't come into this from a place of poverty, right? right, right. That, that's the first thing. Yeah. And so I think that like, people don't understand when you got a hit record in the country, forget the hit record. People don't understand. When you talk as much as me, You got the gift of gab. You can talk yourself into as much trouble as you want. You don't need fame for that. Mm-hmm. That's just called game. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So as nerdy as I was, I always had game. And so I never really felt as though, as far as like the spoils of the world, I never really felt that I was at a loss. Yeah. Uh, and I always, and I, I was blessed. I wasn't raised by my mom, but I was raised by my dad. And I feel as though that male figure consistent in my life gave me a sense of identity that a lot of people that I grew up with didn't have. Mm, right? mm. In fact, my dad was a lot of folks' dad in my neighborhood. My dad took everybody fishing. My dad worked everybody's ass. My dad gave everybody beer. You know mm, what I'm saying? Mm, my mm. dad was the. My dad was. If you don't know what, what we're talking about right now, my name is Romney Malco. Uh, uh, Horace is like victim of the ghetto. Was my shit. That was my song. Yeah. My name is Romney Malco. I made a movie called Tijuana Jackson: Purpose Over Prison. It's available on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play. Van Dango, all that right now. We're talking about that movie. Yeah. And it's kind of like a dark, funny ass movie about a dude getting out of prison and wants to be a motivational speaker. Mm. But a lot of this character, that's just my dad, fam. You know? Yeah. But having that consistent male figure just gave me a, a, a sense of identity. And though I wasn't always 100% solid in my identity, it was, my, it, it to a degree, was my moral compass. Because I wondered where you got the, what was the motivation for the Tijuana Jackson character? Because that, that, that sounds like a real OG nigga. It's not like a real, <laughs> I know niggas like Tijuana Jackson who talks that dude, shit. Dude, you have to. Yeah. You have, listen, I'm going to tell you, like, I'm going to just make it clear. I'm going to save a lot of y'all a bunch of money right now. Mm-hmm. If you if you ain't in touch with your dark side, mm-hmm. don't, 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 don't go watch this movie. Mm. Don't, don't, don't do it. it uh, but if you are someone who has been able to identify your dark side and still make a light of the dark, Mm. You're gonna laugh so hard in this movie, you have to pause it. Mm. Remember, I said that you're gonna laugh so hard in this movie, you're gonna have to pause it. Mm. And um, you have to look, man. I, I've always been soft. I'm just soft, right? Yeah. So, like I said, get the gab, save my ass, save me from a lot of ass whoopings. It even saved me from getting robbed. Damn. Dude pulled a knife on me going to school, told me give me his money. I cracked a couple jokes. Dude laughed. I I got away, right? Damn. Damn. Long and the short of it is. Um, this this soft attitude this whatever you want to call it when dudes would get out of prison when i was growing up i noticed that not only did like the system turn their back on them but i also noticed that like uh the, the families turn their back on them especially back in my day yeah and i just always had this soft spot in my heart for them dudes so i'd end up i'd end up going on double dates i ain't had no business being on mm. Dropping them off at hoods, I ain't had no place being, no business being. I ended up going to places I had no But through that, I developed an understanding of what they were going through, and I developed an understanding of of um, of how the system really sets you up to fail. Yeah, I developed this empathy, but I also developed something because my godfather was a correctional officer. No oh, damn. Yeah. And I developed an understanding of how prison culture affected our everyday life in the community. Mm. I learned that. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, wow. To not talk about this, to talk about American history and not talk about this is hypocritical. Right, right. And so I kind of started making it my life's mission. Yeah. Um, the character, Tijuana Jackson, when did you first start doing it? 1999. Okay. Oh, 99? Yeah. 90, you been doing it that long? Yo, for those of y'all who are wondering, I'm 113 years old. This November be my 114th birthday. A, a lot of people in the room are saying, this brother don't age. Now, you said, <laughs> last time I talked to you, man, this uh, Romney be eating tree leaves and uh, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and shredded tree bark and, and mushroom sandwiches and shit. Are you still <laughs> doing the vegan thing? You know what? Um, I, I still go back and forth. Some days, like now, I feel like I have more of a balance of like, look, man, I'm with a Puerto Rican. It's like, you know, just Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying? They just... They just mess you, but they just mess your diet up, bro. Yeah. No, for the most part, I would say that like maybe four days out of the week, I'm vegan, and like maybe two or three days out of the week, I, I'm eating 
some kind of meat, but my, my family laughs because I really only eat the bones. I don't okay. really eat the actual meat. I eat the bones. Now, do you get your, your, your diet, dietary um, um, discipline from your, your, your family in the Caribbean culture? Because I learned that a lot of Caribbean food is actually very healthy, naturally. Yeah, well, I, I'll tell you what, um, you notice something. Like back in my day, one thing that really stood out to me was how people would come from the Caribbean and then they come to the United States of America, make the same food they was making back in the Caribbean, but they would just gain a bunch of weight when they were in the States. Yeah, yeah. And that helps. I started understanding that there's just there's more chemicals in our food in the United States mm -hmm. than there is um, in the Caribbean. You know, here. Yeah. I mean, you know, in other countries. So that's one thing. But as far as my concern, for me, actually, I had to unlearn the eating habits of my culture. You know, mm. um, I went through what I call a catalyst breakup in uh, like when I was like 29, 30 years old. And that catalyst breakup was where I got to see the difference um, when like I, I realized that I wasn't just breaking up with this, this woman. I was actually breaking up with my entire upbringing my belief system, my traditions, because I was now just questioning everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened to be questioning was my diet, the way that I communicated pain, the way that I communicated period. And um, for me, it was all together. Mm -hmm. Stress and eating the wrong things, they, they both mess you up horribly. Mm -hmm. Holding on to holding on to grudges like my family taught me to do, it's just as bad as eating the wrong foods consistently. And so uh, over time, uh, around 1996, I found a place called the Optimum Health Institute. There's one in Texas, there's one in San Diego. And I would go there, uh, you'd stay there for a week or two weeks, three weeks, you eat raw food, you drink wheatgrass, something called the Jubilac, which is just basically fermented wa like water with made from fermented quinoa. You do Quranics, you do enemas, and Yo, when you was done, you was like, oh, so this is what it feels like when God puts his hand on your shoulder. Okay. Oh, 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 now I get it. And then so slowly but surely, I began to adapt the diet that was more close, that was closer to that. And then with time, you start understanding how much of the how much of a role the mind plays in it. You know, just how much you internalize and the anger that you hold on to. It's constantly producing cortisol in your body, and it can really mess you up. So this, so this place, you can stay there. It's almost like a shit, a, a detox center for natural, pathic um, healing, right? Facts. When I went there, there be there were people there who were uh, HIV positive. There were people there who were uh, junkies, recovering addicts. Mm. Um, there, yeah, and there were people there who just wanted to be healthier. People dealing with cancer, whether it was skin cancer or prostate cancer, there's a little bit of everything. And, wow, you know, and, and and this place really got you on the right track. That's that's yeah. heavy. Doctor Sabi was doing stuff like that. He would take people on these weekly sojourns, and they would stay with him, and he would detox them. So that's that's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. I, I think it's necessary. And unfortunately, I'd be like, you know, me and my lady used to go, but like because of work and everything, I haven't really been able to do a detox in almost three years. Like right. a full go there in three years. You know, oh, wow. We do cleanses and stuff at home all the time. Okay. Now, do you yeah. are you still doing your cardio? What do you do? Because you you're still in good shape, and we're in quarantine, so we can't go to the gym. So how are you handling that? Okay, so because of the fact that I was so funny, I was just doing a live stream this morning. Because of the fact that I've been promoting a movie, because of the fact that I've been you know uh, building this YouTube channel around promoting the movie, uh, I honestly spent a lot of this quarantine sitting behind a computer, eating maybe once a day. Okay. kind of neglecting my health, neglecting my family, et cetera. But uh, on a normal, and, and so I was just talking about, I got to find a balance. Yeah. And, but on a normal morning, my, what I like to do, I like to knock out like 100 burpees. And that usually breaks down into like the first set will be like 35 and the second set will be like 25. And then it'll just get less until I knock out 100. Yeah. And that's because I can do it within 20 minutes and wipe my hands of it. But yeah. once I start doing that for a while, those hundred burpees become the, the warm up. And then from that, I'll do uh, a, a bit more cardio and maybe choose a couple of body, isolated body, body parts. But because I'm 51 years old, yeah. I stay in the compound muscle group. Mm -hmm. That's why I do burpees. Yeah. I don't see this right here. This right here. This ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. it, to me, this is a masturbation exercise. I don't need to do that. <laughs> I, I need to be doing pull ups. 
I need to be doing squats. I need to be doing bending thrusts. I need to be doing straight, uh, a stiff legged uh, um, uh, deadlifts. That I need testosterone. You know what I'm saying? So you think that's more that's more effective than just the lifting weights? Yeah, no, I'm saying that is lifting weights, to be honest with you. Like, oh, you know, do, doing that stuff. It is lifting weights. But if you do any research on how to gain muscle after the age of, like, 40, mm -hmm. they'll tell you all day, bro, compound muscle groups. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you got to know your, your your body type. Yeah. Right? And I, I think that my body type is, like, endomorphic or something like that. Yeah. So, like, you know, I kind of need, of all the calories that I need in a day, I need, like, 60% of that needs to be carbs. Right? Which is unusual it sounds counterintuitive to the way people talk about losing weight but now do you um, ever do any kind of crazy cheat meals because you know you eat healthy eat healthy and you're like fuck it i'm about to eat a whole german chocolate cake you ever do any crazy cheat meals no nah, you know going to the optimal health institute man you really learn to like wean yourself off of that stuff and get that stuff out of your bloodstream you only crave it because it's in your bloodstream oh wow you know yeah and so it's, it's no different like it's no different than heroin or or crack or whatever, addicts are addicts because the stuff lives in and resides in their bloodstream. Mm. It, it, it's for two reasons. And because the brain has uh, this neurological response to it. With sugar, the brain has a neurological response, which is kind of like it goes, oh, whoa, that was rewarding. Repeat, right? And so what we do is a lot of us, myself included, especially when I was, in, I was younger and a lot less resolved, I kind of ate subconsciously to get that endorphin rush. Mm. And sadly, those are usually high fat and high carb foods. And those foods, and, and, and though you're getting that immediate endorphin rush, that immediate gratification, those foods make your liver really fatty, they compromise your digestive system, and eventually lead to all different types of diseases and stuff like that. And yeah. so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Th that's important to know, man, because man, food is being used as warfare, man. The food that's out there now especially in our communities, man, that shit be tearing us up. And another thing, a lot of, isn't it true, a lot of foods that we think are healthy have no health value at all. I love you for saying that. Yeah. Because, I, first of all, I think that where we can really use an education is in just identifying what is food. Right. And the way that I, I choose to put it for my kids and for my family if it doesn't contain nutrients, it ain't food. Mm. I don't care how you prepare it. If there are no nutrients, it's not food. Mm. And you can cook the nutrients out of some things. Some things simply don't have nutrients. And they really make no sense being in your diet, mm. you know? Mm. And so, uh, you know, we have a lot of things like that German chocolate cake where there's no nutritional benefit whatsoever, but it falls into the category of food. Yeah. How is that? How do you eat and fall asleep? I thought you eat for energy. Yeah. And so we we are emotional eaters. And so what I have done probably over the last, since 1996, is just I've basically just weaned my brain and my body off of that desire to have like intense, you know, and, you know, sugary, really sugary foods, you know? Because a, a lot of us think that things that have low calories or no calories, we automatically think it's healthy, but that's not necessarily the case, is it? No, a lot of times to supplement those things, you know this, man, you know, to supplement those things, you use these chemicals that are actually more harmful or just as harmful. Yeah, I remember there was something that my wife got. It was some kind of... Um... Um, low cal it was like a no calorie drink that you could put in water and stir it up and it had zero calories but I would take these things and it would get me sick and I'm like let me stop this shit you know and, you. and I, I learned yeah stuff with no calories ain't real it's not a real yeah. food right so yeah so we, we, we really need an education on this type of stuff this is something that you know we really need to you know start focusing on and, and that's what I try to do with this character's YouTube channel yeah with my YouTube channel, that's what I've been trying to do all these years. It's like in a slick way, have people rolling and being yeah. like, but damn, that's... He hit you with some, that, some knowledge. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the truth right there, huh? Mm. And mm. I've been doing that for 20 years. And on, I've been doing it on YouTube since 2011, 2012. And before that, I was doing it on MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the t And I asked you this before, but the Tijuana character, the teeth, what's... Where did the teeth come from? Was the teeth something to say, okay, let me give this as a, let me give them a different look, you know, just give them a different vibe, give them something different. What was the teeth thing? 
Okay, so now remember this character started 20 years ago. Yes. Right? So people treated, I, I was just walking down Venice one day, found these teeth. Mm -hmm. And they weren't the teeth that I ended up using. The teeth that I ended up using were made by professional, look much more realistic. But I definitely noticed that people treated me different when I had the teeth in my mouth. Really? Yeah. They, they were meaner to me. Wow. They, treat, they treated me as though, you know, they, I was a threat. They would um, pull their kids away from me, and people do that anyway, but yeah, yeah. all people. And I was like, that's interesting how I would, you know, the better my appearance, it seemed as though the better I was treated. Mm. So I started enjoying it. I started messing with folks. You know what I mean? Start putting them in and just going everywhere with them. Yeah. And then at that time, it wasn't, oh, Romney, I love you in this movie. This is before all that. Yeah. Right? I, I, well, I was running an internet business at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, what I started like saying was like, oh, so this is what it's like for some people, you know, to walk through this world. And I was like, you know what? This is the perfect, this is the perfect mask mm -hmm. to kind of trigger the responses that I'm getting from the world. Mm -hmm. And right and, and use it as a way to kind of like uh make myself appear to be someone else yeah and aid in disguising the message because that right. was the whole point of it the whole point was to have you laughing and look let me tell y'all some funny shit i'm not even lying you can look this up there's a guy named brian brushwood and another dude named justin justin robert young and they had a show they have a show online called the night attack okay them two white boys was like, yo, can we interview Tijuana Jackson? Because I was always talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, sure. So I bring TJ on their show. Mm -hmm. It was one hell of a night. Mm -hmm. They then, the audience went so crazy, they wanted a YouTube channel. These two dudes helped me put together the YouTube channel. And the original YouTube audience was from this show, The Night Attack. They called themselves Diamond Club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm making videos and cracking people up. And then somebody saw the video, ripped it off of YouTube, one of the videos, and put it on Worldstar and was like, yo, this dude, this dude been through a lot of shit. No. They had no clue it was me. Wow. Wow. And then some people on Worldstar was like, that's Romney Malco. Some people had no clue. And the next thing you know, the black audience just kind of took off with it. Mm. Right? They was like, oh shit. So my point basically being is that uh, what I realized was people out there were actually subscribing to the fact that this dude was a real dude. They, just they thought, thought he was it. a real cat, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They wouldn't listen to me if I was telling them that right. shit. They wouldn't listen to my corny ass. <laughs> Not back then. When I, dude, I'm the nerdiest dude in my neighborhood. I was the nerdiest dude in my neighborhood. And if you wasn't from... If you didn't, if you weren't from some, if you weren't from some kind of existence like ours, I didn't want to hear what you have to say. Mm. So I can't imagine like real dudes that's really in the street, mm. right? Mm. Listening to me, and so that was just, uh, uh, you know, that, so, that, that, that was just so, so, a, so, another layer of, of 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 disguising the message. Right, and so the Tijuana Jackson can be seen as basically your alter ego to a certain degree because the TJ character can say things that Romney can't because Romney's the nice guy, but the TJ character is just raw, uncut, right to the point. Yeah, and in fact, when you were saying earlier, when you was like, you know, now I know that you stayed out of controversy and all stuff, you know, I gotta be real, man. You know, probably t two things that I suck at and probably two of my bigger regrets in life, keeping it 100 with you, um, one of them is that, you know, I um I was always a people pleaser, mm. right? I spent so much, you know. Look, you coming from the Caribbean family, mm. you never really get fully accepted anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, Black America wasn't trying to have you like that. You know what I'm saying? Back in those days, and you know, and and even though in Trinidad pe people were much more accepting, they still saw you as an opportunity because you were from the states. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I got treated at least when I was growing up. Mm. So, um, you never really, so I was always kind of overcompensating for that, not to mention I had my own sense of inadequacy as well, right? L yeah. Lots of insecurities and my own in in inadequacy. So, I, I, you know, 
I had a lot of imposter syndrome, so I was always working really hard to be accepted. Yeah. And that's translated into who you see today. This is a survival personality that I've created to gain acceptance. Now, right? did you did you grow up in Trinidad, or did you come over later? I mean, were you born there and came over, or what? I was born in the United States, okay. but I went back and forth growing up. Okay. Um, okay. And um, and so I went. I grew up a little bit in Trinidad. I left Trinidad for good in, when I was thirteen years old, okay. and then I lived here. Did and you so, see? A, did you see a lot of the color casts? situation in Trinidad because I know in the Caribbean they have a lot of that that's real heavy out there I definitely did um you know it was kind of weird because like in you know my family the prime example where you know being real 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 my dad's like Indian in Venezuela oh wow right wow. yeah and so you know there was definitely like an appreciation for the lighter kids mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. less of an appreciation for the darker kids and yeah. like, like this is not me making up and my dad used to comb yo my dad used to comb my hair when I was a kid yo I'm surprised blood didn't just come running down my scalp because he was completely insensitive to nappy hair he he had nothing to do with it wow. my dad couldn't even, my dad couldn't even teach me how to shave fam it was, he didn't know what to do with this shit mm. right and I had noticed um, you know, but one thing I always give him credit for was that he was, my dad was always very pro-black, right? Because he is, he is, he is black. Mm -hmm. He's a black Venezuelan and Indian. And a lot of people in Trinidad are, to be honest with you. Right. That's what the mix is, is, you know, black and Indian, African and Indian. Yeah. And so. East Indian, uh, we're talking East Indian. East Indian. East Indian. Yeah. African just, and East Indian. Right, right. <laughs> and so. And your I mom is, no, and your mom is just what? My mom is predominantly African. My mom is born and raised in Trinidad, but, but by way of West Africa, according to our, you know, our gene chart. Yeah, got it. Got uh, it. DNA. Got it. <clears throat> but I, I noticed, you know, there was like this white is right mentality. I also noticed um, that there was definitely like separation. But the thing that kind of kept Trinidad kind of okay was that it was so diverse, right? So we had, we had, uh, we had Venezuelan, we had uh, Trinidadian, we had Dutch, mm -hmm. we had Chinese, East Indian, African. Um, you even had, people don't know this, but there's even Portuguese in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And so it's such a diverse place. And there is, considering how diverse it is, there is um, quite a bit of, of, of harmony. But I do notice as you get closer to elections, even in Trinidad and Tobago, that there can sometimes be like a black Indian divide, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, not always, but I have noticed it in my younger years. The and, name, um, you, even your name, your name is very unique. Is that an East Indian name, Ramani? It sounds, uh, has, yeah. Has well, a Brahmin type of name to it, a, a Brahmin type of ring to it. Yeah, it's a gypsy name. It's a gypsy name that means simple man, good husband. Yeah. And but, but it's derivative of an Indian name, which is Ram. And right. Ram is basically, you know, like. Sanskrit for man, mm -hmm. R A H M, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and and then Malco, um, Malco is certainly uh, European, and I've heard two theories for it. Um, one is that it is short for a, a longer name, yeah. like Malkovich. Yeah. Uh, but then I've also did research and saw that Malco, he who lives like a king, um, is you know. Like an Eastern European man, he really like a king or something like that. But that's all I got on that one. Now let me ask you, Rob, who, what character, historic character, would you like to play? What do you, What do you think would be a dream role for you to play a historic character? Who Who do you think you could play? Oh man, um, I think Stokely Carmichael to me. Oh, being Trinidadian. Yeah, yeah. And being Trinidadian and being so pronounced in the United States and civil rights, that brother. I don't know, man. I feel like uh, he tapped. I, yeah. I, once I started learning about him, he tapped into the blood, man. He, I felt something. You yeah, know. I can see that. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Absolutely, absolutely. You might have just, you might have just put that in the fruition. Yeah, that might yeah, be man. Yeah, because they, you know, a lot of people are talking about him now, man. Because he yeah. was a rider. That brother, he was a rider. So he really that, was, man. Yeah. Um, other than him, like real talk, the role that I really, really wish I could have played, but I was just too old to play it. But if I had done it. I'm telling y'all right now, had I done it, um, 
it'd have been a problem. It'd have been a real problem. I'd have, I'd have resurrected something. And what role I want to play pop. I want to play pop. Tupac. Oh, I, yeah, I can see that. Old, you know, yeah. they were depicting him from the age of like twenty four to, you know, to his death. Yeah. And I was already in my late thirties, so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even, I hadn't been in my forties, but yeah, so I was too old. Man, all right, but let me. We're gonna wrap it on up, brother. Let everybody know where they can watch Tijuana Jackson again. Where can everybody watch it today? Everybody needs to watch it today. Where can they watch yeah. it? Yo, 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 I, 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 I'm going to throw something out there. Uh, Tijuana Jackson, Purpose of a Prison is available on iTunes. It's available on Amazon. It's available on uh, Voodoo. It's available on Fandango. It's available um, on, uh, I can't even think of all the places, Apple TV. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. You can go watch this movie anywhere you want, fam. Um, and you, even on like your cable and stuff like that, you should be able to like um, purchase it. But I promise you, listen, and again, I'm going to just say it again. This is a movie for people who are, who have identified with their dark side. Mm. If, 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 you, if you ain't got that, if you ain't got there yet, don't, don't do this to yourself. Mm. Don't do it to yourself. But if you have gotten there, if you're able to make some light out of the darkness, this movie will have you. This movie, it, look, I'm going to give you a little taste, right? Just so how the character gets down so you understand how me and Regina Hall get down in this movie, okay? Yes. And Tammy Roman. How me, Regina Hall, and Tammy Roman get down this. So the character comes home, and he is, uh, the character comes home, and he's sitting on the porch, and he's talking to the camera. And he says to the camera, you know, we got this thing in prison. And he's smoking a cigarette. Mm-hmm. And what it is, it's called a peekaboo. It's when you push your dick between your legs and make a nigga blow you from the back. This way, when you come, you can shit in his face. And that, that shit is humiliating. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the whole damn movie <laughs> is that bad. <laughs> it's like line after line after line is like, there's some shit that Regina Hall says in this movie that you gotta stop, rewind, hold up. I remember sitting in the festivals looking at people laughing and feeling yeah. like they don't feel ashamed that they laugh yeah, laughing at you. At- <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, everybody, it, it, y'all gotta watch the movie, man. The Tijuana character is. Yeah. Uh, where'd you get the name? Where, where'd you come up with the name Tijuana Jackson? Um, you know, real talk, it was a name that I had a friend whose mother wanted a girl, so she gave him a girl's name, and then he flipped it to he flipped and changed his name to a guy's name. So I always wanted to be like, I wanted to show, and I want to say something. Can I talk a little bit about yeah, something? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so just so you know. This whole thing is finding, uh, uh, I want to say what up to Miami car wraps. They just bought it on Amazon. When I need my yes. car wrap, just know I'm looking for y'all. Yes. Just know I'm looking for y'all. When I need my car wrap, mm-hmm. now I ain't going to lie, it's going to probably be like a 97, 98 Volvo yes, with three miles on it. And it's probably going to need to get some rust plastered out before you put the full wrap. But, and that's why I'm getting wrapped. But when I come, when I need a wrap, I'm coming to y'all. Miami wrap. Yes, That's indeed. right, Miami rest. Um, um, but uh, I want to say something, man. What I'm doing is I use this character to kind of show you, use one, this one family and this little independent film to kind of show you the effects of our prison industrial system on, on our community. Mm. And so I give you a prime example. When he comes home, the grass is really tall. Mm. That grass represents the absence of intimacy, the absence of, 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 of protection, the absence of fatherhood, it represents the absence of, a, of an additional household income. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, that, uh, when you see him and his nephew, and he's got this kid running around that's his nephew, uh, going through the movie, that relationship is the relationship that you often see when someone goes to the joint, experiences that trauma, has to adapt to that inside lifestyle, then comes outside with no way of, no real aid in assimilating civilian life, now that they've been institutionalized, and trying to tread in civilian life, the way in which they communicate and the way in which they mentor the kids is heavily influenced by what went on inside the joint. So that relationship aids in depicting that. And right. it just goes on and on and on and on. And that's what Thank you, Miami Car Raps. Miami Car Raps, you put some money on your Yes, folks, indeed. Man. Shout out to Miami Car Raps. Right? Yes. 
Yeah, and so that's what I'm trying to say uh, in this movie is I'm trying to help bring awareness to all the different effects of the judicial system, you know? Yeah. And uh, and how it affects our community. And so I just do it in a way to where it, it, it really, really uh, makes you laugh and cry. Cool, man. Yeah. I, I can't wait to watch the whole thing. Everybody, y'all go check it out on Amazon, iTunes, Please. and everything else, man. Man, I appreciate you. Again, it's always a pleasure, brother. Um, the next time you come to L.A., man, we got to chop it up again, man. We got to hook up and chop it on up, man, when you come back in town. Dude, I would love that. For real, for real. Absolutely. Thank you, my bro. You know what I got to get you? I got to get you one of these, too. Yes. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. I, I'm a, yes. I, 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 I'm going to get your dress and all that. Don't worry about it. We're going to track you down. I'm going to get your dress and all that. No so doubt. shoot you out a bunch of stuff. And um, and uh, TijuanaJackson.com. If you don't know where to get the movie and all that stuff, just go to TijuanaJackson.com. What's your I, Instagram? Let let people know your Instagram. You know what? Uh, I'm. You know what? Look, I'm gonna keep it 100. Instagram ain't important to me. Mm. I, I want you to come to what I own. Mm. Request an invite at PepsRequest.com. You gonna be trying to get down with my content? Mm. Hit me up at PepsRequest.com. Just request an invite. And I will get you all set up. That's I own my own app, the whole deal. Instagram, all they're going to do is tell you, you're going to come follow me, and then Instagram will say, I can only reach 20% of you. Mm, 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 mm. What is that? Man, what is that? Man, man. Own yours. Own yours. Instagram, come afterwards. You can follow me on Instagram after you follow me on the pet. Yeah, y'all, there you go right there, my man. All right, man, I appreciate <laughs>